dealer's choice. And today we've got an absolute cracker. It's Unibet Ambassador. Hey, it's the Ian Simpson Show. Simpson, eh? Hello, how you doing, pal? Was I not meant to do this? <laughs> I'm all good, my friend. How are you? Yeah, not bad at all. Not bad at all. We got a little bit of extra company today. We've got uh, this one joining us. There we go, good. Uh, at least at least the conversation will flow well then, since we've got someone with brains on it, apart from, uh, you know, <laughs> that includes me as well. So how's, uh, how's life been treating you, Ian? It's been interesting these past, what, four months, five months? Five months. Like, we've been in quarantine for four months, and the months before that was Emma's last month of pregnancy. So it's been interesting, to say the very least. We've, um, obviously we had Emma's pregnancy and birth. Pregnancy was almost flawless, really. And then the birth was scary as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I won't go into the gory details, but yeah, I mean, you see it on, you see it in like hospital programs and, and like the, the baby's born and they hand it to the <laughs> mother and the, and the mother starts breastfeeding and it's this lovely little thing. It's all fucking bullshit. It's not how it works. <laughs> this fucking thing from Alien bursts out of your 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 loving wife, and they hand it to you saying, "Here's your baby," and you say, <laughs> "What have you done to it? What the fuck? Why is it that color? Why have you squashed its head?" <laughs> what has happened to my child? What I didn't I didn't sign up for this. What the fuck? Um, yeah, and then. So you're yeah, thinking all this while she's lying in pain, screaming and calling you for everything. <laughs> Don't fucking come near me. Get away from me. You're like, the fuck is this? I'm like, this is, this is my life now. This is my life. Little alien, uh, mortified wife, angry wife. Yeah. But after like, Emma and Emma was poorly after the birth. Yeah. Um, I won't go to, like I said, I won't go to too many details, but she's fine now. Good. Is the important thing. Uh, but it was a tough little, uh, little period where life was really scary because uh, Adeline is a little bit frilly too but she's totally fine now and then when that got all fixed and everything was going smoothly lockdown hit so basically double lockdown then yeah For, well kind of yeah um we went into lockdown actually it was maybe so after like a week or maybe it was two or three weeks lockdown hit we were sort of social distancing a little bit England hadn't kicked off into proper lockdown, but other countries had, so we were being careful right from the get-go. So we weren't, like, seeing family and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, like, Adeline had got cuddles in the hospital from my brother, mm -hmm. her brother and sister, my parents, her parents. And after that, nothing. Because we've, we've been isolated, you know? Um, so that's kind of tricky just because we've had no, like, help for childcare. Um, and it's difficult to do shit when you've got a baby to attend to as well. Especially when you can't get the... Have you ever seen these baby slings? I thought I had that working, but now it's... That's like the work. thing in the hangover. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's more complicated than it looks. I got him in it, but I, could, I couldn't get... I couldn't get the baby in it. So it's getting stuff done when you can't attach the baby to yourself. It's pretty tricky. Um, yeah. So did, did you sign up for this thinking the baby was going to look after you? Well, I kind of hoped. You know, I, I kind of need a little bit of looking after. I mean, I, the, my the mom one says I'm too old. old. Yeah. My mom I mean, says I'm too old to be looked after, so I have to. I was hoping the baby would look after me. Yeah. I mean, the one I think we all feel sorry for here is Emma. Um, yeah, for sure. She's now got She's two working. babies to look after, two cats to look after, and herself if she ever gets that chance. Well, that's the thing. Um, she's been fucking fantastic. Yeah. So like I say, she, she was difficult pregnancy, which she fought through and we're all fight. Yeah, yeah. All fine now. Um, we're in lockdown, so we've got no help from grandparents. But she's um, taking on a lot of the baby responsibilities so that I can sleep. Because <laughs> if I'm well rested, if I'm well rested, I can play more effective poker. I see. If I'm tired, I'll lose money at the tables. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I can see, yeah, I can see the... So in order for me to work effectively, she's taking on more 
of the responsibilities there. Yeah. So, which I, yeah. So I'm uh, on my days off. Obviously, I'm changing nappies, trying to let, letting Emma nap when I can, et cetera, et cetera. But when I'm playing, she's um, doing the grunt, the, the, all the grunt work, as it were, uh, so that I can be an effective poker player. So she's she's tired, to say the she's, least. She's like the integral part of the glue that holds this family together, sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <For> sure. <laughs> Let's not beat around the bush. Let's give her fucking kudos where it's needed, man. I mean, come on, eh? If anybody, if anybody has met Emma, you'll know that she is an absolute diamond. She really is. Ian is well punching above his weight. <laughs> Let's not lie about that. But no, she's a, she's a good... The two of you are actually really good together. Um, yeah. It's good to see uh, people that are happy and are kind of suited going forward, especially in tough times, mate. It's, it's good. Yeah. And the fact yeah. you pair you do it with a smile on your face. Most yeah. of the time. I mean you guys haven't seen us argue. Of the, course. The public, the, public, the public sphere doesn't see doesn't see the the, the screaming matches. But uh. Well you mean she shouts at you just go, Yes, yes, darling. <laughs> yes, okay. yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, uh, yes. Yeah, my my, my granddad always my granddad told me years ago that if a woman ever shouts at you or starts arguing with you, the best thing to do, even if you're right, is put your tongue between your teeth and just go because you will never win. So, <laughs> help me in a bit of good stead going forward. But yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. kicking on with this, um, if you've watched it or if anybody hasn't watched it, we just kind of do a little bit of a, a rundown about the the guest, a um, few stories, where you're from, except so a bit like um, the kind of low, <laughs> low end budget, this is your life. <laughs> <laughs> there's, no, there's no red book, we've got a notepad. And a bottle of water. So yeah, you know, <laughs> Merry Christmas and all that. So anyway, you were born in uh, 1986 in Newcastle to mum and dad, Chris and Lynn, and big brother, mm -hmm. Andrew. Yep. Now, I mean, I've heard a lot about Newcastle. I used to um, frequent parts of Newcastle quite a while ago. It is a new, uh, are you from the central area of Newcastle? No, I, I'm originally from just north of Newcastle. Just north, okay. Um, I mean, is it true that <clears throat> in certain parts of Newcastle, if people get divorced, they can still remain brother and sister? Yeah, you're a funny fucker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now we've started. <laughs> now we've started. <laughs> Listen, I get ripped every week on this for how I fucking sound, so I, I'm, I'm firing back. <laughs> so this is why you're going to join you on the show. You need someone else to get punched. No, but it means you can listen. You, you understand what I'm saying. It's like when we had Feraldo. I, I don't sometimes have to speak very slowly. <laughs> But but yeah, the yeah, but no, you can actually get subtitles if you're watching. Oh, there really? is a button on YouTube where you can get subtitles, and it can, nice. it's apparently really funny, really yeah, funny for I some bet. of the words. Yeah, yeah, it'll, yeah. it'll get the translations wrong sometimes. <laughs> Audio unavailable. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I mean, growing up in Newcastle, um, what is the area like? Great. Yeah, it's Newcastle. It's one of the nicest places in England, I think. I might be biased. Yeah, it's a friendly place. Uh, I had I have the best parents in the world to raise me. So yeah, absolutely lovely. Went to uh, went to university in Newcastle, to Northumbria University. Yeah. So uh, I was in Newcastle every well I, every midweek day during my studies. Uh -huh. uh, absolutely adore the city it's it's you know whenever I, whenever i go away on a poker trip and i come back into newcastle or come on the train mm -hmm. i see the time i'm coming home yeah. sometimes depending on which angle i'm coming from if i'm coming home by a car i'll see the veins with the north yeah it's it's just it feels like home you know it's a, it's a welcome these monuments are like welcome homes uh, and while i love traveling i love coming home because i love where i'm from yeah. So yeah, I mean, coming back to Newcastle is always a good thing. Um, yeah. <clears throat> you've been all over, uh, but as you said, you um, studied uh, was it uh, biotechnology? Yeah. And um, for people that don't know the full ins and outs of what that is, what is it? Um, how did you get into that? Uh, I 
did biology is one of my A-levels, and this is my okay. favorite subject. Uh, my brother actually had done the same degree, and I'd, fallen, I'd, I'd enjoyed biology, and I was looking at uh, the, the courses at Newcastle and Northumbria, and it was the one that was best advertised. It was the one that looked the most interesting. Uh, biotechnology is a very interesting field. Um, one of the studies like genetically modifying organisms and things like that. <clears throat> So that's where that's where insulin comes from, from genetically uh -huh. modified bacteria. So that's a diabetics on um, in a bad way right now because they've got their medicine. <laughs> so it's one of it's one that's one of the things that uh, that's involved in biotechnology. And um, you passed, as you said, um, and you then went on to become a teacher. Was it far after that, or did you have any jobs in between? I had a really really shitty job in between. <laughs> it sounds fancy because I was working at a company called Helena Biosciences. Okay. It sounds like, wow, yeah. <clears throat> um, and they brought me on hoping to like find a position for me. Um, my brother actually got me the job because he worked there. And there, there was a guy who was retiring. They were hoping I was going to fill his role, but they weren't totally sure. Um, and I was basically just a fucking guy in an office, which is fine if it's for you, but it's not for me, you know, I was, I was bleh, just not in the environment that's for me, no. some people thrive in that environment and I just don't. Um, you like to be around then, people sort of thing? Well, we sort of were around people, but like, I don't know, it just wasn't, Yeah. Well, it just didn't fit, um, <laughs> so I was like, I need to do something else. So, so I made the plan in my head and sort of planning my finances and stuff like that. And I thought, right, I'll, I'll, I'll hand in my notice in a month's time and then, and then do my PGCE to become a teacher. Uh -huh. but, and they went and made me redundant. So, <laughs> oh, no. so, the, so, so, so I got a month's pay for the month I was going to work. <laughs> when I was <laughs> when I was planning to quit at the end of that month, so there was this absolutely lovely man who got the horrible job of making people redundant. Yeah, yeah. And he and he could see he was like beaten up about having to do this horrible job. And I'm trying not to fucking laugh in my redundancy interview <laughs> because I'm like, it's gonna leave. I was gonna leave in a month. You're giving money, you know. <laughs> I'm, yeah, yeah. Getting, I'm getting money for not working. So this poor bastard. Just, just the nicest guy trying to be like really consoling and stuff. And I'm trying not to laugh in this fucking, in this fucking redundancy interview. So that was fun, yeah. And then, and then I had a, a couple of months off before starting my PGCE, which <clears throat> um, so I became a teacher. Ah, okay. And you were a teacher for three years. Was there anything in particular that you taught, or was it just like was it school kids, nursery kids, high school kids? High school kids. High school kids. And you taught yeah. biology, or? Well, I, my first year I was a supply teacher at, uh, at Bedlington High School. Okay. Um, and first year I did supply, so I taught all sorts of stuff. I taught history, I taught geography, I taught religious studies, believe it or not. I taught um, all sorts of stuff. Um, and then I got the, the permanent post as a biology teacher, which is obviously okay. my, my niche. Uh, and, so yeah, uh, Te teaching, was, teaching was pretty amazing. I loved that job. I really did. It was it was heartbreaking when I left it. And uh, you met you met your partner Emma, your wife. I met I met Emma during the PGCE, and we. This what is, is the PGCE for, for uh, some people that don't know? I, I, don't, I don't remember what it stands for. How do you ask? I've got the qualification, and I don't know what the fuck the acronym is. What the fuck does PG? It's the teaching qualification. What oh, so it's a teaching, for? right? Okay, so it's a thing to do, it's right? Teaching qualification. What does PGC stand for? Fuck. It's nothing to do with observation, I take it. No, probably not. Because no. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly never fucking passed that. Sky's enough for the lectures not to pass it. Yeah, <laughs> for that one. Um, so yeah, you yeah, yeah. We, I met her at the PGC, but she didn't like me. We both had different partners at the time. Ah, this okay. was like, this was four, three years before we got involved okay. uh, as a couple. So yeah, she she described me as too noisy and loud. And I, I don't know where she gets that from. Uh, no, it's a mystery, <laughs> man. Mystery. 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, like two and a half years into my teaching, um, we reconnected on Facebook. Oh, okay. And sent, and sent a few dark messages and we were both single. So we ended up going on a date and then... Everything spiraled from there, yeah. Everything spiraled from there, as it does. Uh, going from, I mean, you said you were three years as a teacher. Did you yeah. pick up poker whilst you were teaching? I was, my, my dad taught me to play cards when I was like five. We would okay. play, we play with matchsticks at the, yeah. at the caravan site in the Lake District. Uh, <laughs> for a story that I'll never forgive them for. We were, we're playing cards with matchsticks at the caravan site and it's, and it's you know, it's a lovely memory of being at the caravan site with the family, family holiday. But this one memory, I've got two pair of woolen cards. Two <laughs> pair. Uh, and we bet a few matchsticks and then it's the draw. And I draw one and my brother draws none. Which, if you're a five card draw player, knows that he has a straight or better. Yeah, yeah. Which is a rule. If someone, because like when, else, when someone stood pat, we didn't know what <clears> pat <throat> mean. We just sort of quietly said, I don't need any and try to keep it still, you know? Uh, we knew that was, ooh, that's a force to be reckoned with. He's got the, he's got yeah, the goods yeah. here. He's got a really good hand. Well, I draw my full house from my two pair. And I'm like, I want a full house. My brother's <laughs> probably got a flush. I'm going to get all the matchsticks. This is brilliant. <laughs> they all, and they all just fold like that. And I'm like, I bet like 10 matchsticks or whatever. Over bet the pot. And, like, <laughs> so and, the and they all fold. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, that's disappointing. And this goes on for like the, the 20, 30 minutes that we're playing. And I'm like, what? and I look behind me and there's a fucking mirror. <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm only like five, and I'm only five or six years old. And I was just through such a fucking temper tantrum. Cards and matchsticks in the air. It's not fair. That's how I got, that's how I started this game on tilt. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it says, um, yeah, and I, I, I played recreationally as soon as we um, we discovered Texas Hold'em on TV, and um, as teenagers, we, you know, we, we started gambling for like pennies and five pence and ten pences. And yeah, and we discovered Texas Hold'em on the TV, like many other people. Um, you know, poker, they're not poker, they're not, um, late night poker, late night poker, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we started playing Texas Hold'em. We didn't like the idea at first of having a betting round before the flop. Okay. Because why wouldn't because why wouldn't you see the flop? Any two cards. <clears throat> so we didn't. So we didn't. So we. So we didn't play. We so Cramlington and Hold'em as we call it. Crammy Hold'em. We just Andy. Uh huh. And get the flop. So we just skipped that betting <laughs> round because why wouldn't you call to see the flop? Was our logic. Some we see the Yeah. <laughs> I mean, some some may say that that has kind of held you in good stand going forward. Yeah, yeah. Play, play, play. I mean, I've, I've cut out some of the starting hands. <laughs> some. But that's where my that's where my, that's where my poker beginning started. Playing one hundred percent of hands. Uh, <laughs> and it didn't change much as I started as a professional. You know, I no. just ran really fucking good to get away with it for a while. <laughs> so then, yeah. So did you play in local casinos? Um, what was it yeah, like? Yeah, yeah. Like, fine. Didn't have any. I don't think I cut. I didn't cut for a, a live local event for a while. <laughs> I wonder why. Uh, just playing like three quid buy-ins, 10 quid buy-ins, 20 quid buy-ins. Um, and then I've played a few satellites online. I've played a few comps at DTD, uh, satellite in for like three to a 300. They had like a monthly 300 thing. And I sat like into that. And that was a huge adventure, like driving down to Nottingham, um, finding a hotel and, you know, playing cards. Yeah, yeah. All of the excitement. And I did that for a few trips, and I did it for the Irish Open. I sat light and in, and then so and that was you know huge. The Irish Open was a three and a half k buy-in then, in 2012. Yeah. It was the second time I sat light, the second time I sat light <clears throat> into it, and uh, me and Emma went to the Irish Open. Um, we went a few days early because Dublin's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So we explored Dublin, you know, since wandering around St Stephen's Green, feeding the ducks. 
um, visiting the Guinness Brewery, the Jameson Storehouse. All yeah, yeah, stuff. yeah, 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 yeah. And was that your first um, big, like, big buy-in event that you had played? Yeah, like, like yeah. three and a half. 2012, grand. and you were that's... the sole survivor as well. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I went and came fourth. It's just this recreational player who um, only just learned not to play 100 percent of starting hand. <laughs> I could have, I could I could have down to like 70, <clears throat> uh, and I went and got fourth. Um, now, the, the company called Paddy Power were having a sole survivor promotion at the time. And it was whoever lasted the longest out of all the online qualifiers got a 100k sponsorship package. Nice. 50k had to be spent on live tournaments around the world. So that they, and they would, and they would use you as like a promotional thing. Any, any live tournaments, like any company, or does it have to solely be Paddy Power? Any, any, any company. So it was like the, the PCA or the, you know, the World Series or whatever. Um, but if you look at teaching holidays, and if you look at the poker calendar, they don't line up. No. The only one, the only one that fits is the Irish Open. That's why Emma can come to that every year. But, you, but she doesn't get to come to many other ones because she's teaching. Um, so, and I was a teacher at the time, so I had to choose between surrendering this fifty grand. Uh huh and staying a teacher in a job that I absolutely adored or leaving teaching for a year and pursuing this 50K worth of buy-ins playing poker professionally around the world. <coughs> Excuse me. And, so, and, some, and a lot of people would think, oh, that's an easy choice, you no. know? I know you But mean, it really yeah. wasn't because I adored the job. And, of course. You know, I, and I, was, I was torn up trying to tell the kids that I was leaving. I really was. I was absolutely choked. So, um, what, but I, I what, did... I'm sorry? So, so, so yeah, I did leave the profession and uh, played poker for a year under this 50k so, of buy-ins. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you said it was a 100k package, so it's 50k. What that was live buy-ins anywhere, yeah. as long as you obviously. What was the other 50k? You know, was that like uh, cash? Oh, so it was expense cash. money, so to speak. The expenses, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's going <clears> to <throat> be your, your flights and your hotels and whatnot. And that was just a, like a, 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 an additional free roll for the tournament, or did you have to yeah, get it a, when you signed up? It was just a free roll for anyone who qualified live. Uh, sorry, anyone who qualified online for it. You and it was only one one winner. One, yeah. yeah, one winner. Because I mean, you came so, forth for a hundred and one thousand euro, a hundred and one thousand five hundred, is it? Or hundred and seven. Yeah, hundred and seven thousand five. <laughs> So uh, de a de decent week's work. Um, 107k there plus the 100k last longer. Yes. Yeah, so the one who, I, I think my biggest cash at the time was um, 300 quid. Because it was check, a, check the end of, yeah. I think it was the, the last time all the, without being uh, downplaying it, a last time that a lot of the bigger names came to the Irish Open because you had Helmuth was there. Helmuth uh, was there, he was on. How many was that? 2011, I believe, and I played with them. Uh, you had like a lot of the big names used to come over because Irish Open, for those that don't know, used yeah. to be one day one, no re-entries. It used to be three, three and a half k by you. Yeah, Wednesday yeah. would be the satellite. Thursday yeah. day one, Saturday day two, blah blah blah, and the final day was Monday because uh, it was over the yeah. You know, over the, like the Back Easter weekend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Back when uh, they they had the law that uh, you couldn't. All the pubs were closed on that Friday, right? Apart from the hotel. Apart from the hotel. So the the, the Burlo, uh, the Burlington Hotel, yeah. was just the place to be. So it was just a massive party atmosphere. Somehow they had they were allowed to have serve alcohol, but the rest of Dublin didn't. And the, yeah. and, every, and the taxi drivers were like trying to tell people this because people were coming on like the stag dudes and that. Yeah. And people would be like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. the taxi drivers <laughs> winding us up there, eh, no beer in Dublin, eh. Why the fuck are the pubs closed? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it's because um, yeah, I could remember working there uh, a couple of times for the Irish Open at the Burlington. It was always bouncing as it were. But I mean, for me, that style of tournament that they had, with the uh, no re-entries, the one day one, it was like the yeah. purest of poker. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful, and because, because it was such was... a big buy-in, yeah, and because it was like three and a half k, <clears> like it was. It was almost like a pilgrimage for the Irish to play. Yes. It was a big deal just to play the thing. Mm. <clears throat> so, excuse me. The, the Irish poker community were really, really, they still are, 
but especially when it was a freeze out, really patriotic, really emotionally invested in it. Um, and just playing it's an honor, making day two is huge. Cashing in it is a lifetime achievement. You know, yeah. that's Dara. <laughs> 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 Good <year. laughs> um, yeah, I mean, because it's, I think it's renowned as the oldest um, tournament in the world, I think. Or it was the oldest, oldest in tournament. Europe. In Europe. Um, oldest in Europe, because yeah, the World Series Mains the only one that's longer running. But yeah, I mean, I'd say it's like the purest of pure. So, I mean, yeah, 2012 uh, was a good year. You, so, you left right. teaching. You started yeah. then going, would you class yourself as pro, semi-pro when you then just gave up the game or? Well, I mean, anyone can, can play cards and say, and say they're a pro, which is mm -hmm. I suppose, exactly what I was doing uh, without really understanding yeah. any, much of the nuance of the game. Like I, I, I had a, a good background in a bit of maths and a lot of science, which is all uh -huh. about analyzing data. So I was thrown in at the deep end, playing 50Ks worth of buy-ins in a year. So playing quite big. I was playing 5Ks and shit. And I didn't know about selling action. I'd never heard of the fucking concept. <laughs> so <laughs> not that anyone in the right mind would buy at the time. Um, so yeah, playing big stakes for someone who'd barely played any high stakes cards. Literally just thrown in the deep end. I bet yeah. the sh fucking sharks when they saw me coming were just like, <laughs> He's got fifty rounds of low. Here we go. Uh, but the, the 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 poor bastards didn't reckon on me running particularly well again. Golden. Yeah, golden. Um, uh, well, going back to just to the the first big bink, as it were, with two thousand and twelve. Yeah. Were you getting updates of who was left in the Soul Survivor, or I remember people wearing jackets. Yeah, yeah. Everyone wore a, a, like. <clears throat> Paddy Power jacket so you could identify them. You had to be wearing that to be in the promotion. And at the final so table, was there many Soul Survivors left? Two. Two and you or two no, and Me and Phil McGuinness. And did it go on the hand? The hand I was going to say, yeah. Got him. Uh, I just got it as a gift. Um, he got dealt, it was something. I, I opened jacket off suit because. I'm a fucking idiot. Uh, <laughs> Andy Black, I think Andy Black had Ace King. I think Thomas Beer had the Aces, and Phil McGuinness had Queens. It was something Queen. ridiculous like that. It was it was some fucking ridiculous cooler, amped up because I'd opened the pot with Jack Eight. So then it went three bet, four bet, five bet, and the three of them were all in. So I think I think it was Thomas Beer who got them both. I wish I, I should look at that hand up again. Um, but he just, he just got cooled out of the promotion. But I mean, uh, and, Andy, and Andy Black, an amazing player, got knocked out at the same time. So, yeah, so the ladder. Yeah. The ladder comes so, into play. The double well. ladder and the promotion. For me. And the promotion. And I take it when they were giving away the promotion, that, did this play in your mind whilst we were playing hands, or did you try not <laughs> to let it affect your game? I didn't let it affect my game because. Anything can happen. I've told you, Crammy Holden was how we learned the game. <laughs> Anything can fucking happen. You get two cards, you need five to make a poker hand. So, <laughs> yeah. And uh, when it was going for the last longer, I didn't. And it, it, it kind of played for me well, because like I said, the Irish are really patriotic. Mm -hmm. So just cashing that event was it's an amazing thing. honor. So I was playing like a fucking banshee. And they're, <laughs> so they're, they're reining in because they want to cash or they yeah. want to make it too. Or they want to. They want a ladder. And You're I just cash and cash. Completely, chips. completely, completely not understanding ICM. Didn't know what that was. <laughs> didn't learn. For, didn't learn what that was for another six years. I'm just playing like a fucking banshee. So I'm playing like a banshee on the fucking ICM bubble of the Soul Survivor. <laughs> yeah. So like, oh. I, I was hoovering up loads of chips at that point because I was just like, yeah, it's fucking cool. This is very fun. Here's a here's a question for you. If, say, for instance, you were in the hand, and mm. you had the ace king, and obviously yeah. you didn't know what the other two had, 
and it yeah. came around to you, and the aces has went all in. The other sole survivors has went has went all in. And you're sitting with ace yeah. king, maybe even kings or queens here. Do you take into account if he gets knocked yeah, out? I've got hundred k. I, I would have then, yeah. I, I mean, I would have now, but then. Yeah, but I, 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 this is great. <laughs> I've seen how well this can do. This is one of the best hands. Let's go. That's my attitude. I didn't know any better. So from then to now, you say you've kind of came on leaps and bounds and learned about bit, ICM, yeah. pay jumps yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, like I got this, this 50k with a buy in and studied yeah. the game as hard as I could whilst investing them. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I don't, I don't even know what resources I was using to study then. I had a poker tracker, so I was looking at my own statistics and looking at other people's statistics and seeing differences. Like, if you compared <laughs> my um, VPIP of 70 to Dara O'Carney's VPIP of 19 or whatever the heck it was then, a little bit different. And Dara's <laughs> supposed to be a really good poker player, so maybe you know something I don't. So, yeah. And, so you kind of, yeah, pay and learn sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was, I mean, it was quite a hard final table. I, I think it was Kevin van der Missen, or if I'm pronouncing it. Van der Missen was the winner. So he, won, yeah. he won it that year. Then going into 2013, when you kind of started your journey of this party, party sorry, Paddy Power sponsored pro, as it were. Um, yeah. I think that's the title you had with having to have the package. Yeah. 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 Um, 2013 was yeah. a pretty shit hot year I mean no, got, yeah. it's like that song January da, 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 February and it goes through all the months I've got January the PCA you came second in a side event for 9k yeah. March EPT London you came first in a side event for four and a, just under 4.5k and, and you cashed the main and then yeah. the biggest one yeah. of yeah. all time the Irish Open rocks up yeah, so it was like my it's last like, buy-in of this of this 50k package was the Irish Open again. Oh, okay. And I'd like, yeah, and I'd like I done I done fine. I, I got 50k with the buy-ins and cash for like 35k, which is cool. running amazingly well for how I was playing. Did um, you have to have that money spent by the end of this Irish Open? Pretty much, but I don't think I don't think they would have been militant about it. But I was <clears> just being I was I was following the T's and C's and being like, okay. Yeah, got to got got to use it, and well, it wasn't exactly a hardship. Go and go and play professionally for a year, traveling the world. Oh, well, yes, sure, I can do that. Let's go. <laughs> uh, so yeah, like I said, I went to the PCA, I went to EPT London, I went all over, went to went to Latvia for a tournament just because of the adventure of exploring new places. Yeah, um, I mean, so, yeah. Um, so you rock up at Dublin with Emma or MZ. Uh, what I will say is, MZ. you call yourself Ine. Ine. Do you call her MZ, or do, is this something that she brought on board? That this just backtracking. I call, I call her. I, I call her MZ. So that's where yeah. it comes from. Comes from you, yeah. Yeah, I, I got I got Eni from grandparents and my brother. Right, so it's a I family thing. It's not something you've just went. Bing! Yeah, and then here's Eni. Like, is it? It was just so, that was creepy. <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was like the shining dude that we could see with an eye. Now you know how the rest of us <laughs> feel. <laughs> I, I don't know. And then it caught on in the poker world. And when I'm on Twitch, they, they call me Eni. You know, yeah. No, no, I'm just I'm just out of curiosity because um, obviously you've got other people uh, pros that have different like uh, Twitch handles, handles or Twitter handles and nicknames and stuff, and instead of being yeah. called like Neil Farrell, Feraldo, Ludo, Ludovic is always yeah. Ludo, and so yeah. on and so forth. So it was just in case, like, there was a special sort of... Yeah, yeah, I, company. You said the grandparents called you when you were a kid, so... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Perfect. It just caught on. So, so yeah, anyway, so, yeah, 2013, back into the Irish Open. Did you, turn up, did you turn up early again? Yeah, yeah. Couple yeah, of you done the touristy thing again? Yeah. Um, I mean, MZ... So St. Stephen's, St. Stephen's Green is a beautiful place. Now, it's, it, and me and Emma love feeding the ducks. I mean, we love animals, and that's yep. one of the things we do. Good lads. Me, me and Emma had been together for like 18 months at this point. And we were both teachers, and then all of a sudden, I'm not a teacher, I'm a professional poker player. 
uh, so it was a big transition for our relationship because obviously uh -huh. I'm traveling a fair bit. Um, but yeah, our relationship's been progressing and she, she's been supportive of this new journey I'm on. And uh, it's, it's come to the time and it's time to propose. Um, and I thought, right, I'm going to do it in Dublin where this craziness kind of started. We were six months into our relationship when, in 2012, Dublin. And then, uh, so, so I was like, right, okay, I'm going to propose. Mm -hmm. And I was going to do it at St. Stephen's Green because that was one of our favorite places. Um, but then I went and made the fucking final table again. Um, <laughs> and I said, and I said, right, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do it on on the stream because obviously the cameras were was watching, her family was watching, and this way everyone gets to see the proposal. And I said, no matter where I get eliminated, I'm gonna do it. And I'm so glad I didn't come second, not because, not because like obviously winning it's fucking amazing. But can you imagine just stealing that bastard's thunder? That poor bastard. I'm just like, you've won the tournament, congratulations. I'm just going to um, yeah. take your you moment of the limelight <laughs> <laughs> and, and propose. Uh, so I'd had it. So yeah, I had, I had the ring in my pocket the entire final table, which was infinitely strange. Um, and I, I, I wasn't nervous for the final table, not really. I was excited, hyped, but I wasn't nervous. Uh huh. Um, now, do you put and that? Then, and then I, I put it down, having the ring in my pocket. Yeah. I was like, "This is great. Life's fucking. No matter what happens, this is just amazing." And then the tournament was over. The river card hit. Backdoor diamonds for me to win the thing. Diamond on the river. And then all of a sudden, I was nervous because it was <gasps> all right. Now we're proposing. Um, Holy! Oh my God! This is actually this is the next thing. Uh. But yeah, and I did. And she said yes. And then it was, the deal was sealed. And it had to be I, a diamond on the river, like, then a diamond in your pocket sort of thing, yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, was there any, um, did you do anything, like obviously 2012, the year before when you came fourth, going forward, I mean, are you a superstitious sort of person? No, 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 no. So you, you didn't do anything the same as you'd done the year before coming into this? I mean, so, some habits are just... I, I mean, we, we took a couple of days in Dublin before because mm -hmm. relaxing and enjoying yourself, being in a good mind, head headspace is important for poker. But it, was not, it wasn't like, you know, I, I scratched my ball six times before I sat down at my day one table, you know? Nothing like that. <laughs> uh, I'm, a man of, I'm, a man of, I'm a man of science. Like I, I, I superstition? No, but no, there's no such thing as luck. And you're talking to someone who's the luckiest person in the fucking world. Uh, but I don't actually believe in luck. Yeah, I, I, I'm not saying in, in regards, science. like in, in regards to luck. It, a lot of people, <clears throat> they don't put it. I mean, I, I, there's certain things I do um, in certain spots, not just poker. Uh, and it's not really down to luck, it's just because, I mean, you, I don't know, yeah, you could say it's luck. It's kind of like a habit. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, it's almost, OCD, almost like a, a OCD. Comfort, yeah, comfort and quirk you've got. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a couple of those, I guess, yeah. Yeah, um, but you didn't, I mean, was there any um, interesting hands leading up to the final table and stuff? Because were you sole survivor again, or yeah. you were? No, I didn't start light into it. Uh, okay. sat, yeah, they sat right into it. So Calvin Anderson got that that year. Yes, I, uh, uh, the, the online crusher. Jesus, yeah, he's an amazing yeah. player. Uh, um, but was there any interest in that? Sorry? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Jesus. I mean, my hand history recalls terrible. I asked my Twitch audience. My Twitch, there's a three minute delay on my Twitch and they ask about a hand and I'm like, what hand? Did I play that hand? What are you talking about? <clears throat> no, but so I asked me to recall a hand from 10 years ago. The final um, moment, yeah, so, as it were. Yeah, for sure. There's a, Danny Maxwell was the photographer and he captured one. And it's, um, I think it's three of a kind in an open and a straight draw against my straight or something fucking ludicrous like that. And I couldn't read the fucking ball by the river. I was that hyped and excited the blood had all rushed to my brain and my brain just stopped working and there's a picture that um that danny max has taken and the river's dealt and i just do this 
<laughs> and everyone around and it's the biggest it's the biggest pot of the tournament there was maybe two tables left and it's just this huge fucking pot of a gazillion chips are going in and the rails all around and everyone's just the, the, the photograph's brilliant because everyone's pulling different faces yeah uh, even the, even like the dealer's like oh, and i'm like, like am i won? i don't know i can't even figure out who's got the best hand anymore because I can't. I can't remember specifics of the hand anymore. I, I, yeah, got, I, just... I, kept, I saved the blogs though because they did an online blog, mm. and I've got them saved on a file somewhere. So I could. I could check them out and see just how badly I've played the hand. Yeah. Yeah. You just. You just ran. Ran well. You would say, or you played well, or a mix of both. Ran very fucking well. Um, I think anyone who wins a tournament does, but yeah, mm. ran very fucking well in some spots. Um, and. I th- like I said, the Irish are very patriotic, and they want to make day two, and they yeah. want to cash more more than just the the money. It's the it's like I say, it's a pilgrimage. It's a it's a rite of passage to them. Yeah. It's a big honour to play the Irish Open, and I took it the same. I, I, it's a big honour to play it, but I also took it as wee, let's have fun, let's go. So being so aggressive, <laughs> they, were, they were they were folding too much. So I was picking up a lot of chips. So I had that in my favor. So, but, yeah. so as well as running good, I stole a lot of chips. You abused the bubble on. quite a bit. Yeah. Even if even if I did, I don't remember if I had a stack to do it, but it's what happened. Yeah, you just like took advantage of good situation. One, one more than, yeah, yeah, one more than my share of pots that way. Because I can remember after it, I think I was in the bar with Jesse and a couple of others, and you rocked in with champagne. And I went, I'll see your champagne and raise your Zambuca. Yeah, <laughs> the second guy wasn't, wasn't one. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Yeah, we were, we were, we were out till 6 a.m. I can't remember. Like party. Yeah, it was 6 a.m. Because Emma was just tapped me on the shoulder and said, right. <laughs> we've, had enough, we've had enough champagne and Zambuca. Can we please go to bed? So we went in order. <laughs> so we went to, we got room service and it the nicest sandwiches we'd ever had. You know, we're already on we're already on a high and drunk mm-hmm. and hungry. And we we both remember these these sandwiches just being the tastiest things we'd ever had. <laughs> Brilliant. Um and yeah, so the run continued for that year. You um you uh, went to Vegas, you got twenty six K in an event. Man. Um, no, yeah, that was in 2014. Oh, that was, um, yeah. WPT, it was it Five Diamond or something? Yeah, 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 the Five Diamond. I got, I got, I won one of those events for 50k. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I won one of those um, events for 50k. Then September, you, GUKPT Manchester, 8th. Then October, you came second to a friend of mine, um, uh, the UKIPT in oh. London, Robbie. Um, yeah. for a hundred and seven thousand, yeah, absolutely lovely book is Robbie, yeah. Um, and then December, Unibet Latvia, you came first in a high roller for 11k dollars. Um, and I have over a one million in live tournament earnings that are recorded as of the yeah. end of mob, yes, um, hit that, that peak not so long ago, and uh, so it was a brilliant year. You so you get engaged. All this, all the the winnings, the Irish Open, kind of following on from what happened the year before. It was like you couldn't have wrote yeah. it better. No, really. Good. Um, I know I you say you're not much into luck because you're all into science and stuff like that, but something must have been shining that year. You, even you, the most skeptical of people. I know. I'm like the most skeptical person. I'm like, if you ask me about luck, I'm like, no, luck doesn't exist. But I think, <laughs> I, like, like. Um, how the fuck does you explain like how that year? That's it. <laughs> you know, uh, I think humans like explanations. They like a reason for things happening, even if it's just as simple as oh, it's luck. You know, <laughs> uh, sometimes it's sometimes magical things happen to people, and yeah. you know, th- amazing things do happen. And that's then that year was particular. Well, it was obviously particularly just everything went right. Yeah, it was like so, snowball. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, um, and then no, absolutely obscene, yeah. I'm so, sorry, an absolutely obscene year. Just yes. Everything went perfect. 
Um, and then the next year, the 2014, the WSOP main, your top 300, 297 I've got here. Now, that, that's a completely different tournament compared to mm. the Irish and that, the longer blind levels. I think it's kind of similar, but it's like eight days and stuff like that. How do you prepare for stuff like that? Um, whew. I mean, it's got to be a long-term thing, really. Like, in terms of being always prepared for poker, you've got to be studying. You've got to be... Do your best to be healthy, which I'm not at the minute. But we'll talk about the lockdown weight uh, <laughs> that I've put on in a bit. Um, but being prepared for poker, it's it's a lot of a lot of little things, you know? Doing things to take care of yourself mentally so that you're happy. Eating right, exercising right, trying your best to sleep right, um, which is fucking impossible. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've never slept well. Um, yeah, and, and for a 10k, I mean, having time off when you're out in Vegas is an important thing. I remember, I remember one year, the, the guy who I'd met at Dust Till Dawn, um, he was going to Vegas for his first time. He'd scratched up. 10 grand and was selling action and going out of Vegas. He's like, it's my first time going to Vegas. I'm going out there, I'm selling action. And I didn't buy. Because I thought, first time people go to Vegas, they're typically not prepared. And I saw this guy, <laughs> I saw this guy like two and a half weeks into my trip. And it's exhausting going into Vegas for a month, for example. Some people do the whole two and a half, two months, three months, or whatever yeah, yeah. Like it is. I'm exhausted after two weeks. I bumped into this guy, he'd been there for like a month already. And Jesus Christ, he looked like a fucking ghost. He looked awful. Because he wasn't just playing every day, he was partying every night. <laughs> oh, dear. And he was in such a fucking state. And I think when I bumped into him, he hadn't slept for 48 hours. A mixture of playing and partying. And I was like, I just sort of put him one side and said, mate, go home, go to bed. And in, in the middle of our conversation, he runs off because he's got diarrhea, because he's yeah, just been abusing his body for two weeks. And he comes back and I just take him, mate. You need 24 hours in your hotel room, fucking yeah. sleeping and watching Netflix and unwinding. And then I get a message from him, and he says, yeah, you're right, Ian, good advice. And he disappears, and I'm like, right, great. And I get back to my tournament, and I get a message from him, like, 20 minutes later. Yeah, I walked past this 2-5 uh, table, and I couldn't resist. <laughs> so, <I backed down. laughs> so the advice fell on deaf ears. Vegas is brutal, man. It's yeah. like, and if you don't, have, if you don't have any discipline to take that time to relax, to look after yourself, then you'll fucking blast off your money. I mean, you can blast off your money doing everything right, but if you're going to be partying all the time and whatever, you're definitely going to blast it off like yeah. twice as hard. Yeah, I mean, um, do you have any like routines when you go to a certain place? I know you said you're not superstitious, but. Do you have any like eating routine. habits or drinking habits yeah. or sleeping? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 sleep, I mean, sleep is always a battle with me. But, you know, I try and sleep as best I can. I actually sleep really well in Vegas. I don't know why. I don't sleep well anywhere else in the world. But something about Vegas, I sleep really well. I never quite understood it. I wish I could replicate it. I don't know if it's just the, the air conditioning. I don't know if it's the, the climate. The scents in the hotels, because every hotel has a different smell. I don't know if you ever noticed that. <laughs> every casino has a different smell in Vegas. They use a different perfume in the air, I'm sure. Anyway, I don't know what, what the fuck it is. But yeah, it's important to have a routine and you know, wake up, breakfast, and my one is singing. Now, if you go watch me on Twitch, you'll know I'm a horrendous singer. But I'm an enthusiastic singer. And it feels fucking good belting out your favorite song lyrics. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I, that's what I do to get myself hyped up. My poor fucking neighbours, whenever I'm in the hotel, you know, must must suffer. But uh, yeah, I'll sing along to my favourite songs and blast some like happy, hyped up music. Just to um, kind of get you pumped up for the day ahead, sort of thing, yeah. Yeah, and then and we, you know, coffee, food, music, off out. Let's do this. Nice. Um, it's actually kind of handy if you've got a little bit of a walk to the venue. Because then that's a little bit of exercise. Because exercise is another thing that's very good for yeah. a poker mindset. Um, so yeah, having a, a walk to the venue is often a good thing, I think. Because it's just light exercise. You're not going to exhaust yourself, mm -hmm. but it gets the blood pump just that little bit. Uh, so yeah, having a little bit of a walk from, ven from to your venue is a good thing, I think. So 
kind of different than the Irish Open because if you were at the Burlington with the Irish Open, for those that don't know, uh, if you're in the hotel, you basically rock out in the lift down the stairs. You're in the card room. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah exactly. So we, we we would go out for a walk uh -huh. to Saint Stephen's Green, walk around uh -huh. Saint Stephen's Green, and come back. That was what we did. Right. Okay. Yeah. It was very easy just to to skip that part and just go from bed to the room. Yeah. And that's skipping a big part of the preparation for a tournament. Of course. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, um, do you have any anywhere in the world that's your sort of like your go to? Obviously, the Irish Open always, regardless, always, always going to be yeah. all up here on your heart, etc. Yeah. Is there yeah. anywhere you think to yourself in the calendar? Here we go. I'm definitely going there. Apart from the Irish Open. Uh, I mean Vegas, but I don't find it as sentimental as I used to. No. Uh, it, I, I, I'm, I mean, the Irish Open's the big one that's yeah. like always up there. The, I mean, I work with a company called Unibet now. I'm an ambassador for Unibet. And the beauty of their live tour is that they don't have set stops. They have places they frequent, but they have four stops a year, mm -hmm. and they always put them in different places. Yeah. Um, so they don't. So which is different to how most companies run it, like the GUKPT, you know they're going to have Manchester, Luton, et cetera, et cetera, which is great. And it's nice to have that regularity and, um, and whatnot. But with the Unibet Open, you get to explore all these different places, yeah. which is great. So I've been to like Bucharest with the Unibet. I've been to Copenhagen. I've been to Latvia. Uh, you know, it's nice to have different spots on the calendar different yeah. places to, 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 to explore. That's one of the beauties of live poker is that you get to go to a city that sure. you wouldn't have gone to. Um, like I wouldn't <clears> have been to <throat> Sinaya if it hadn't been, I hadn't even heard of Sinaya until Unibet said, we're going there, we're going to have a ski edition of a poker tournament. So we're skiing up in the mountains in Sinaya. Uh, so yeah, yeah pretty, that, that, I mean, I, that's what I really like about Unibet. You you came uh, Twitch and Unibet ambassador 2016-2017. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Previous to that, you done a, a bit, a couple of bits and bobs. Obviously, then you you done the party poker stuff that was uh, entwined party with. Party hmm? Party power. Party power. Party sorry. Party party power. Power. I do apologise, Paddy. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you, that intertwined with the Soul Survivor winning the uh, yeah. the main event and stuff. You also done a yeah. bit for Sky Poker Television. Yeah, Sky Poker TV. That was a nice gig. Yeah. Um, what was we, that? Uh, was that just like talking about hands and giving advice, or? Yeah, they, they had they had a show on. Um, and I, I would appear once a month, I think, uh, give or take. And you'd go down, and there'd be a presenter, me as an expert, <laughs> and a celebrity. Uh, so so. Uh, Nick Fitzgerald, for example, was one of the pundits who came on as a non-poker player, um, just coming onto the show to try his hand at poker. And he would take me on, at, like heads up, and take me on in a cash game, and take me on in some other gimmicky, silly games, yeah. and have a bit of a laugh and play some cards, talk about hands, talk about analysis, and have a yeah. And that was the show. That was a that was a fun gig for a year or so. But then Unibet came along. Um, the Sky Poker Show actually ended at the same time as Unibet wanted to start up their ambassador program. Okay, and how, how did you know about that, or how did you, were you approached, if you don't mind me asking? I, I attended a bunch of their events, um, because I like the Unibet events, I like <clears> the idea of satelliting it and getting a package to go and play somewhere exotic, uh, like like Copenhagen or somewhere yeah. fascinating and new. So I satellited into loads of their events, because I loved, I loved their satellites, and I got to know the, the, the people who work for Unibet. At the time, it was a lad called David Pomeroy. Was uh, head of poker and he was one of the loveliest people you could hope to meet. Um, and he, because I'd met him that way, and he wanted someone who could be on Twitch, he thought I would be a good fit for it, and brought me on. So and that was that, and that's where we are now. I've been been twitching for three years now. We'll go to the doctors. Uh, yeah, I should, shouldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so no, funny. I've watched. I watched a few of the. <laughs> The Twitch streams. I'm when it comes to certain social media uh, stuff, apart from Twitter and Facebook, it's all alien to me. I spoke to Adam Owen about yeah. uh, Twitch, and he says, "Oh, you've got to watch it. It's good." And it is. I mean, I've seen his setup. I've seen your yeah. setup. Um, 
for those that don't know, what is your Twitch handle? I'm twitch.tv slash Ian Simpson Poker. There we go. I will post it at the bottom. Uh, yeah. So when you see this, it will be probably here, here, or there. Anyway, so if you do want to know more and learn a bit, because the way Ian talks about hands, um, it is interesting. He does give a little bit of an insight. And also, if you do like your sort of hard rock metal music, uh, Ian yeah. plays them all. Maybe throw a couple I of bits of Shania Twain in there as well sometimes, if you like, oh. you know. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean... I like, I like all sorts of music, yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, you've done a lot of training stuff as well. Um, am I right in saying that? I know you've been yeah, working with Brian LaPlante as well. Brian, Brian started a coaching company called Learn Pro Poker. Uh-huh. And Brian is an absolutely superlative card player. He's a bracelet winner. And he started this coaching thing. And it's fantastic. He's got hundreds of videos now. Um, a bunch of it is looking at the, the game theory optimal way to play cards. And then he'll do reviews. I did one, one with him that he recorded looking at one of my tournaments. And he said, it goes from looking at the game theory optimal stuff to exploiting the player tendencies. This is what you would do game theory optimally. Uh -huh. You can do this to exploit this kind of player. So it's taking it to the, to the next level, as it were. Um, and it was it was really good because I've done a couple of sessions with Ryan. It's a, it's a bonus to me work to be an affiliate for Learn Pro Poker. Um, and the first time we did a session, he identified X, Y, and Z. Here's a mistake, here's a mistake, here's a mistake, this is how we fix it. And then this next session, it was fix this, fix this, fix this. So I was really fucking proud of that he spotted the, yeah. the old leaks that had been plugged. It was great that Hans happened to have come up to highlight it. And then he was like, great, well done. Now this is a thing that you can do differently for this next spot. And here's another thing that you can do differently for this one. So it was really fantastic. Um, now one thing about Learn for Poker is there's a Discord group. And this Discord group's getting really fucking big. Ryan is still responding to everyone in the hand history discussion uh -huh. thread. And I threw one in the other day. And I thought, uh, it had been a while since I'd posted in the hand history discussion thread. I had a hand, I'd pulled a big bluff, and afterwards I wasn't sure. So I put it in the, into this thread. And I thought, I got, and there was a bunch of feedback from a bunch of different players. And I thought, um, I really want Ryan's input because he's like the fucking best. Yes. I thought, you know, there's thousands of people in this group. I probably won't get a yeah. bit of his time because he's so fucking busy. And lo and behold, he did get back to it like, pretty much like that. The only diff the only reason it wasn't like that is because he was asleep because of the time zone. <laughs> and he, he, and it's a, being part of Learn Pro Poker is amazing because you've got access to Ryan's brain. And Ryan is like just amazing. He's, a, he's such a good poker player. Uh, and it's some wonders for my game. So, yeah. So you feel you've came on leaps and bounds since the yes. sort of tutorial stuff with him, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Pa yeah the past um, year and a half, but I've I've, I've progressed quite a lot. Yeah, I mean, as I said, I mean, obviously the Unibet stuff, they've been an ambassador there with all these new uh, stops. Uh, I think I can remember seeing on your um, Twitter that they were not supposed to be doing a Newcastle leg before lockdown and quarantine and Corona and all that came out. We've done, yeah, we did. We did a. We do the UK tour as well, uh, yeah. which is a smaller tour. The Unibet uh -huh. opens on one K buy ins and four different stops throughout Europe. But we also have a Unibet UK tour, which is um, 220 pound uh -huh. uh, and various stops in the UK. Uh, we did, we, we hit, we went to Newcastle and it was great. So I final tabled it actually, final table on my own turf. Um, but yeah, then, then lockdown hit. And so the UK tour and the Unibet Open tour is obviously um, stopped. Unibet made the decision quite a while ago that they weren't going to hold any tournaments in 2000 and 2020. Yeah. Um, they made that decision pretty early doors just because they, they wanted the customers to know where they were at. Yes. The logistics of planning a live event, especially the way Unibet do them, is pretty darn intricate because we don't do the same venues over and over again. I mean, we, we do have some stuff where we go back to. Like, we do go, we, we'll go back to Progress and we have a relationship with our casino and whatnot. Yeah. We don't do the same ones every year. We do like to, to branch out. Like, we've done Vegas before. We've done the ski edition in Sinai. And our events aren't just sit down, play cards, get on with it. 
the events have all sorts of stuff going on around it. They have the, the players' party, the welcome yeah. drinks. Uh, they'll often arrange other stuff that's in fitting with the, the locations, like skiing in Sanaya, for example. So our events aren't as easy. I don't think our events are as easy to organize as other ones. So our events team are, you know, fantastic at what they do. So they made the decision early on, we'll have no events in 2020 and reassess coming into 2021, depending on how the world's doing. Sure, yeah, of course. I mean, online poker at the moment has been boomed because obviously everybody's indoors, you can't play live. Obviously, you're an ambassador for Unibet, as you say, along with a few of your yeah. close friends. Um, what would you say um, puts Unibet out there better uh, to play live and online compared to other sort of teams and companies? Well, li well live, like I said, we, we do different spots every year. We have four uh -huh. different spots in Europe. We do exciting venues. Uh, exciting places to visit so you can make it into a holiday as well um, but the events are also just the most fun because the players party is always fantastic and the welcome drinks is fun and the atmosphere is just friendly and happy and enjoyable it's not as stagnant yeah. as some tours have become I think. <clears throat> um, online we, the unibet has been growing really really well and a lot of other companies are shrinking um, there's a lot of good tournaments. It's particularly good for my my specific bankroll. Um, grinding tournaments ranging from like twenty five bucks up to a hundred bucks. Sure, it's pretty ideal for that. It's also ideal for small stakes grinders as well, though. You better pretty generous with free rolls. They give uh -huh. me two free rolls every time I go live. So that's great for people who just want to like practice the game without putting any money at risk. Because if you don't know the game, why would you want to risk real money? Of course. Um, and one of, one of the things I got going with Unibet is the nano stakes, the nano tournaments. So buy-ins ranging from zero to one euro. Mm -hmm. so, you can, so you can play a tournament for 20 cents if you want to like have just a little taste of yeah. playing for real money. Uh, we've, got, we've got a streamer called uh, Elrond, Lyle, Lyle um, Elrond66 on Twitch, and he's doing a bankroll challenge, and he's turned nothing Starting a starting bank roll of zero for 720 bucks. So he's gone from grinding the three rolls to grinding the nanos to grinding the one euros and the two euros and the yeah. five euros. And he's, and he's sort of starting to play just a little bigger now that his bank rolls yeah, going just kind of louder than up, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's, yeah. So I think I think it's great for someone who wants to play kind of seriously but don't don't want to risk too much money. Sure. But it's also good for a professional because these bread and butter tournaments, I find them, they're, they're, they're not like thousands of runner fields. Mm -hmm. um, so the variance is lower. It's soft. <laughs> it's very soft. Um, and the buy-ins, I think they're pretty, they're, I mean, they're great for me personally, uh, ranging from 25 bucks up to 100 bucks. It's pretty great, in my opinion. Uh, and there's plenty of them to fill my fill my schedule. So. Well, that's it. Yeah, I mean, you've got the best uh, every world possible. If you've not got a bankroll, three rolls are there the way for you, all the way up to the higher higher stakes, yeah. um, like a few other sites as well. But as Ian says, it's easy to access. It's easy to go. Um, I'll give me a second. Yep. Okay. Yep. Aha. Uh -huh, I will. Yep. Okay. Lapin talking about the chip race, mm. and he said, "Of to remind mm. you that mm. you are his bitch." I'm, I'm his bitch. Please. Plug, plug the chip race. Remind him he's my plug bitch. The chip race. <laughs> ah, yes. I'm the newsman for the chip race. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, on this, you do a segment on the chip race with David yeah. Lappin and Daryl Kearney. For people that don't know, but really you should know what the chip race is, it is Ian. It's a podcast. It's a podcast um, covering all sorts of stuff. Lavin's really good at getting guests for the podcast. He's had some absolutely huge names on on the show. He's had like Phil Helmuth. He's had Big Cody. He's had all sorts of huge names. Um, he gets them on the show and he interviews them, kind of like this, but audio, audio only. Yeah, um, Lavin's not the best looking fella, so it's, <laughs> it's probably better for him to to just stick to radio. 
Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always get told I've got a face for radio as well, so I can sympathise <laughs> with that one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Trippers is good. It's a really good show, and uh, I do the news for it. So it's, the news has been a little bit dry lately because there's no live focus to talk sure. about. It. Uh, there's been a few little bits and pieces come up, a few a few scandalous bits and pieces that we uh, that we like to talk about. Um, but yeah, good show, fun show. And they've had the, the best guest ever was yourself. They they had they done a bit on you, um, an oh, interview. Gosh, that was, that, yeah, that was back in season. Two thousand. That was back when the trip was re- it was, well, That was back when the trip was restarted because they ah, okay. didn't have a sponsor, and then they got these uh, Zara. They got sponsored by Unibet, who uh, re- like funded the chip race as it were sure. uh, and that was one of the first guests as those as, uh, as the chip races you know, come back thing into the air uh, yeah they, they they got me really good they needled me fucking mercilessly <laughs> <laughs> no i mean i think that the the show i mean i've listened and watched it a few times because they have certain segments where they used to be able to watch i think it's changed a lot now as you say um, it works well because you've got David, Dara, they kind of have a little bit of humour, they have the the technical bits, they've got yourself coming in on it, they have a few other people as well. Um, yeah. It is really good. Um, different segments, have like three or four people sometimes on the show. Um, it's yeah. not as long as this. Some people no. criticise, no. I try and get the best out of people, like this man. But <laughs> it is, I mean, they've won, they won a big award recent, uh, fairly recently, didn't they? They went and won the GPI, the Global Poker. Uh, and yeah, was it not GPI? What the fuck was it called? It's going to kill me for not knowing this. The Global Poker Awards. Yeah, that's what it was. Uh, not the GPI, that's the Player of the Year thing. Yeah, yeah. They, they won the, yeah. Yeah, they won, uh, yeah, the, they won the Global thing. Poker Awards. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. In 2019, 18? 19. 18. Yeah. Something like that. Something like that. <laughs> Uh, they didn't let me hold the trophy. They said the news wasn't a big enough piece for to get any of the glory. It was all done to them. They said <laughs> no, I think it works really well. That I said the the three of you guys in there, um, it works. You kind of, especially um, you do your little bit. They do their little bits, and everybody bounces off each other. There's uh, yeah, we do. Not like the good cop, bad cop. It's like funny cop, funnier cop. Ha ha ha! We're gonna laugh at him today, and yeah, you can be the <laughs> jokes. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, well. all the news that's all. That's all the news is for. Yeah, <laughs> no one gives a shit about what's happening in poker. They just want to see me and laugh and needle each other. <laughs> so I mean, going forward, uh, you've got baby Adeline, little girl, uh, yeah. as you've explained. Um, what is going to be the future? What does the future hold for Ian Simpson? I have no idea. Poker wise, I'm, po- I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be a poker player forever, and I have no idea what I'll do afterwards. Um, poker wise, I'm perfectly content in the routine I'm in right now. Uh, uh-huh. Twitching for Unibet is a great gig, really enjoying it. The Twitch community is absolutely lovely. I've got the nicest community. Uh, there's a bunch of people who tune into the show very, very regularly, who are just the nicest people. And we all bounce off each other while I'm yeah. twitching. The grind's going really well. Um, it's one of the places that's thriving in lockdown is online poker. Well, it, ha- it was thriving. Um, it's taken a big dip now. Lots of places are coming out of lockdown, and the weather's great. And everyone, because everyone's been cooped up, they don't want to be at the computers. They want to be fucking out. Yeah. So a lot of people are going out. So poker's taken a bit of a decline. It always does in summer. I think it's taken a, almost like a bit of a double hit because people have been cooped up. They want to go out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I'm still doing darn well. I'm running really well, and like I said, I've been spinning hard with LPP Learn Pro Poker. Uh, and it's paying off. So, it's for the for the for the near future, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing, keep grinding, um, keep twitching, and keep on going with that. For the future, I don't know. I won't. I won't be a professional poker player forever. Yeah. Uh, definitely. Definitely need an exit plan of some sort. And I have no idea what. But if you have any ideas, please please fire them over. <laughs> uh, I might. I might open a cat cafe. Yes, I've, I've been would, to one would, of them. They're brilliant. That would, yeah, that would suit me down to the ground. Opening up a cat cafe, just looking after cats, serving people drinks—that would be lovely. <laughs> well, I mean, whatever does happen for you in the future, Ian, it's it's been an absolute pleasure. Love to the family because you're now the family Thank man. You. 
Um, and uh, you take care of yourself, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Much love, bro. Thanks for having me on. It's been a blast. Cheers, buddy. Thanks, man.